You're watching The 7 from WATE 6 on your side. Good evening, I'm Bo Williams, and welcome to The 7. Glad you're with us tonight. We want to get a look at the big seven stories right now, and we begin with some breaking news we need to get you up to date on. Just a few minutes ago, the Supreme Court confirmed when Tennessee's abortion ban will take effect. The Supreme Court officially entered its judgment to overturn Roe v. Wade today. That starts the clock on Tennessee's trigger law. Abortions will be illegal starting on August 25th. Tennessee's law has an exception for a mother whose life is in danger. It does not have, though, exceptions for rape and incest. Now, doctors who break the law can be charged with a felony. Next now on the 7, we're still following a standoff in West Knoxville. We need to get you up to date on. Knoxville police have been working to contact a man barricaded in a house on Dance Avenue. KPD just tweeted they are continuing efforts to take the man into custody. Negotiations have been unsuccessful so far, we understand. Special operations squad units have utilized a distraction device and an acoustic device to try to peacefully resolve this situation. Knoxville police are telling us or telling the public to stay away from that neighborhood. The house, two blocks north of Sutherland, not far from the Third Creek Greenway Park, to give you a point of reference. Police say the man is believed to be armed. He reportedly got into a fight with someone before police arrived. We do have a crew at the scene who was able to speak to a neighbor about the ongoing situation. Sister called about 2 30 and was telling me, I don't know how long it had been going on at the time, but she called me and come out and it was swamped out here. There was quite a few more crews out here a while ago, but I guess they're going back to patrol or whatever. But, uh, I, I really didn't see it happen, but the guy's in the house next door. He doesn't live there, so the guy that lives there was at work. And so I don't know if he knows him or what. But. Again, the standoff still going along Dance Avenue. Police have not been able to get the suspect to come out of the home. Of course, we'll keep following this for you closely and bring you an update tonight at 11 o'clock. Next on our list, an arrest has been made in a double murder. It's a case we first told you about more than two months ago. Lonnie Wright is now charged with two counts of first degree murder, plus especially aggravated robbery and burglary and several other charges. Roan County's chief deputy says Wright is suspected of breaking into a home on Buck Creek Road in Kingston back on May 16th, allegedly killing Steve Groover and Cindy Scruggs. Deputies picked up Wright during a warrants check yesterday afternoon in Harriman. Wright is being held tonight on a $2 million bond ahead of a first court date set for August 9th. Continuing our Big 7 coverage for you today, Knoxville's police chief discussed dismissals, arrests, and more within his department in a one-on-one -on -one conversation with WAT6 on your side. We requested an interview with Chief Paul Noel after several big developments came out of the department. Now, last week, we told you Noel fired a veteran lieutenant and suspended a captain following an internal affairs investigation. And the week prior, two officers had their patrol duties suspended after they were arrested on DUI charges. Today, he spoke to us about the importance of truthfulness and credibility. There's really there's only one penalty for truthfulness. Once you lose your credibility in this profession, then, you know, it's very difficult to testify a court. And it's almost impossible to gain that, that credibility back in law enforcement. So, you know, it's pretty much standard practice, you know, now across the country that if you're, you know, sustained for truthfulness and that's affirmed, then the only penalty is to be, in, to be terminated. Reducing violent crime also remains top of mind for the chief. He says overall homicide numbers are down this year compared to last, but the city could be doing even better. That comes, he says, through working with the community. It's a partnership and something officers can't do alone. WAT 6 on your side reporter Elizabeth Kubel is going in depth with Chief Noel on Tennessee this week, getting insight on his changes and what to expect from KPD under his leadership. That's coming up for you Sunday at 1230 again on Tennessee this week. Next on the 7, Tennessee's Attorney General is suing the Biden administration in federal court here in Knoxville over the threat to pull school nutrition funding if states do not recognize federal policy on gender identity and sexual orientation. The White House told states earlier this year it was well, tying anti-discrimination rules to USDA funding for schools. Now, Tennessee AG Herb Slatery has filed suit along with 20 other states over the Biden administration's interpretation of those rules. Tennessee and other states have also sued over a similar requirement from the Department of Education, which aimed to keep states from allowing transgender youth on girls' sports teams. That policy has been put on hold by a federal judge.
Speaking of nutrition, we're hearing now from Knox County Schools about the rollback of meals at schools that have been free for all students, regardless of their family income since 2020. We told you back in May that the free for all students policy was not going to be extended next school year because of a change on the federal level aimed at easing the burden from the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of families had trouble, obviously, during those times. Uh, and also, they were looking to providing meals for their students during the school day. Uh, if you think your student qualifies for the free or reduced price, you'll have to apply. We posted a link at WAT.com to help you with that process. So check it out online. Rounding out the Big 7 for you tonight, we're learning more about the future home of the Tennessee Smokies. Uh, this morning, a board meeting was held to explain what the plan is as the budget seems to keep going up. W86 on your side's Paige Weeks now looks into the matter for us. Bo, the point of this meeting was to inform the public about the plan moving forward. This, as a lot of progress, hasn't really been seen. One of the biggest challenges of this project has been the fact that the cost keeps growing. What started out as around $60 million has now grown to $80 million. That's why they've taken action to keep costs down and to reduce construction. They were really focused on reducing the amount of square footage uh, particularly focused on reducing the amount of square footage in conditioned space rather than just uh, open space. Of course, there are still a lot of unknowns at this point, but we will keep you updated every step of the way. Reporting in Knoxville, Paige Weeks, WATE 6 on your side. Bo? Paige, thank you. Another big story for you. A moment of joy captured on camera as Knoxville police returned a prize and sentimental baseball glove to a teen with cerebral palsy. Love this video. Take a look at it. It was shared with us by Carrie Millsaps. Uh, it captures the moment 14 year old Mason Millsaps was given back a missing backpack. Inside, two baseball gloves, including one that Mason had been eagerly wanting to get back. It was given to him by former player David Berg. You can see him there pulling those gloves out of the bag. Well, you know, we've been telling you the glove has been missing ever since the family van used to take Mason to Smokey's Games, one of his place, favorite places to go, was stolen. The van, along with a specialty stroller, were found last week. Unfortunately, Mason's family said it was too damaged to fix the van, so they had to leave it at the junkyard. Now, four people have been arrested in connection with the van theft. Each person you see right here is facing charges tonight.